Okay, I needed a break from researching Hikari's domain expansion and Knuckles' APR nan ability. And what do I do? I watch a good old Asekai. And what can I say about Asekai anime? They are bad. Absolutely terrible. But I love them so much. Asekai anime have been skyrocketing in popularity recently, resulting in everyone throwing their hat into the ring, leading to some good ones like Shield Hero and some bad ones like Conception. And just some hilarious ones. Kashiro is a personal favorite of mine that I find really funny. But the great thing about this genre is that it is always so creative because there is no limit to what you can do. You want to be a vending machine? Go for it. Want to have the magic power of online shopping? Sweet. It is a guilty pleasure of mine watching them, but anime like ReZero and Jaws Reincarnation have ruined the Isekai brand because they are just way too good. Ooh, did I get you with that clickbait? Yeah, there's regular Isekai. Then we have those series which bring out the best of the genre. But how do they do it? What separates them from the norm than the absolute trash? Exaggeration. Exaggerating is not always a bad thing. It is something every manga artist or writer or even storyteller does. There needs to be an idea, an aspect, or just a piece of the media that you're trying to create that is focused on exaggerating. Let's look at it through an Isekai lens. Every Isekai is about dying and being reincarnated in a new world. Simple. If you keep it at that baseline, congratulations, you have a mediocre story. Some heavily focus on the reincarnation aspect, being brought into this new world as something completely different, leading to series like Reborn as a vending machine and Reincarnated as a slime. Two very different series, but that same exaggeration still hooks you. Others focus on the cultural aspect, as in the characters might have been transferred into a new world, but their intelligence and knowledge of their past life are still intact mixing into this fantasy setting like the world's finest assassin reincarnated. Okay, I'm not reading that whole title, but you get it. All video game and Sekai can fall in this exaggeration, as it usually is video game players that play the game a bunch who get stuck in the game, use their knowledge to get really strong, and there you go. Okay, so what do ReZero and Jobs Reincarnation exaggerate on? And I guess I'll add sort of online too. If you watch all SAO series though, you then you realize why I'm saying I guess. Let's start with ReZero and Jeez, what a series to start off with. Is this even an Isekai? Okay, yes, it is, but it's such a deep, emotional story, so far removed from the normal Isekai brand. Like, if you got a black belt in karate, then you move states and start learning, I don't know, baseball. Are you still a black belt? Like, you're not even using the same skills. That's what ReZero is. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. ReZero focuses on the most often overlooked aspect of Isekai. The character dies to get into this new world, mostly. So the character, Subaru in this case, has to leave the normal world they knew behind and essentially start over in this new one. Subaru goes to a world where magic and powers actually do exist, but he doesn't have any grandiose fire magic or something. He has the power of immortality. Essentially, every time he dies, he comes back to life at a previous time, and only he remembers what happened in his previous life. Any progress made, memories created, connections built, all disappear with this new reset, which is a sad part of an Isekai. You left your original world behind, all your loved ones, your career, everything you've done is left behind as you start over again. Imagine the toll that takes on someone if that happens over and over again. Wait, you don't have to imagine because that is Subaru's life. Well, lives. You can't force someone to remember you or be friends with you. It is a collection of self-isolation and depression, with you trying to keep all your connections together, but that means you have to see people you love and care about live their lives without you. That's what makes this series so good. The emotions are real and they are gut-wrenching. Jobless Reincarnation is a real iffy one because some people really love this series and other people hate it because of the main character's personality. Which brings us to the main focus of this Isekai. Jobless Reincarnation is really unique because it starts Rudy, the main character, off as a baby. Like a full reset, which most Isekai keep their characters the same age as they switch over, but Jobless Reincarnation really brings home the fact that this is a completely new world. Rudy had to learn the language, had to learn magic from the ground up, he essentially lived a whole new life. This is what makes the series incredibly different. Rudy in his past life was not a good person, there's no way to deny that. But does this new life mean he can change the type of person he is? In the beginning of the series, it was made very clear that Rudy was still acting like his old, selfish, perverted self. He even was afraid to leave his house. But this was his second chance, and living his new life with his new parents and friends made him want to change the type of person he was, become a different person, a better person. 
Past actions don't prevent you from making an effort and changing. Even a full reset isn't enough to change a person. Some freaking god entity couldn't really change Rudy. The only person that can change you is you. No matter how many mistakes you've made or mistakes you're going to make, as long as you never give up and keep trying, you'll see a change. And that is beautiful. The people around you will see the change too. Rudy had no connections, no friends in his previous life, but now with his efforts, he's surrounded by people that love and support him. I also can't forget to mention Jabba's reincarnation's insane detail into the background, and the world building is just great, because it really adds to a story when every character has their own lives, or you can step away from the main characters and focus on anyone, and it'll still be really interesting. Sword Art Online is arguably the most popular isekai ever. Doesn't mean it's the best or not overrated, but that's for other people to debate. But it does mean that it has a lot of sway in the video game style Isekai series. And that's really the main focus of SAO. Other than Kirito and the other gamers being stuck in a video game rather than a different fancy world, it's pretty generic. Like, can you really think of something that stands out from SAO? Other than Kirito is a cheater because he died, but he also didn't because he like merged with the game. I don't really remember what the reason was and I don't really care because we all know it didn't make the most sense. Other series like Log Horizon, Overlord, and even Hunter x Hunter which had some game elements during the Greed Island arc are often compared to SAO on the aspect of being a game, even though these series differentiate the sons through different and more interesting ways. But it's important to call out SAO as the father of this subgenre, like you can't appreciate a new 4K television without acknowledging the original bulky black and white TV. Okay, maybe my opinion of SAO is shining through just a little bit. But, this is the difference between a good Isekai to an amazing Isekai. Did I use this whole video as an excuse to talk about my favorite genre and shows? Maybe. Did you learn how to exaggerate for the sake of good art and writing? I hope. Let me know what your favorite genre in anime is and why you love it. Alright, peace.